But first, this year's Expo Chicago may have come to an end, but artists say the support shouldn't end there. They need it all the time. Arts correspondent Angel Edo takes us to Navy Pier for a look back at this weekend's Global Art Fair and shares how Chicago's arts community can help support artists year round. I mean, it's very unique to be standing here today because it's not a typical view of this art fair. The walls that once housed the International Exposition of Contemporary and Modern Art, better known as Expo Chicago, are coming down after its ninth edition. Held at Navy Pier, nearly 30,000 art lovers, collectors, and artists alike traveled from across the globe to take part in the art fair. Back in 1980, a fair called the Chicago International Art Exposition began, uh, you know, our city's journey uh, as a host. And we were built on that tradition. But for almost 20 years, there was only one fair in North and South America, and it was in our city. So, you know, that tradition is what Expo Chicago is built on. From Cape Town to New York to Detroit, this year's Expo Chicago featured more than 3,000 artists, as well as more than 100 galleries from 25 different countries. Three of them were run by people of color. So for the first time, Richard Beaver's gallery came in from Brooklyn, New York, and he sold the piece by Melvin Nesbitt Jr. And the piece is called The Great Ice Cream Chase, and it's going to be at the 21C Hotel here in Chicago. So that piece will be here. Also, Miriam Ibrahim, who has been in Chicago for quite a while and also has a gallery in Paris, she signed her first Chicago-based artist. That artist is Carmen Neely. Patricia Andrews Keenan of Pigment International, a multimedia platform that promotes artists of color, says Neely's style offers a form of sensuality as depicted through abstract paintings. The International Art Fair also included abstract paintings by Rebecca Morris and Gina Litherland. And that's our next show is by her. She's a painter who is a magic realist who lives in Wisconsin and paints in Wisconsin. And um, she's a really beautiful painter. Her work often comes out of literature um, and has all sorts of literary illusions. And while the city's institutions, both big and small, continue to support and celebrate Chicago-based artists, Corbett says there is more work to be done. He says one of those elements is arts coverage to encourage both artists and art lovers to engage, explore, and continue the work. The other, younger collectors. If we had those things, then the commercial infrastructure could grow more than it can. It can't really right now because we don't, I mean, what's going to support it? It, you mm -hmm. know, and so you can't say, well, what we need is more galleries, which we do, without having more on the ground, you know, people around here who were going out and not necessarily buying blue chip established art, but were taking a chance on younger artists. And that's really essential. For Chicago Tonight, I'm Angel Ito. And if you missed Expo Chicago, but are interested in seeing some of those featured artists, the city's next art fair called The Other Art Fair is taking place later this month in Fulton Market. And you can head to our website for more information about Pigment International, Corbett versus Dempsey, and other artists.